Hello, this is Maladrum from Today in Gaming, teaching you how to use the Skyrim Creation Kit. Today, we're going to start some more complicated tutorials, as I promised before. Now, I wanted to cover a lot of the basics, just for the sake of making sure we're transitioning as best we can, but I realized there are plenty of basic tutorials out there on the Skyrim Creation Kit, so if you have a problem that is more basic, you can just search in YouTube and find someone else who's also made good tutorials. Some tutorials that I recommend are any by Best in Slot or DarkFox127, I believe his username is, on YouTube. They make really great tutorials, and if you do want me to explain something more basic in detail, I can do that, and I'll be happy to do that. So if you are curious of that, just leave a comment below, and I'll cover it. Um, but but today we're gonna start with retexturing a sword, and then we're gonna teach you how to create your own custom mesh, import that into Skyrim, basically make your own full sword. But first, we're starting small in these more complicated tutorials, and then we're gonna move on to quests. That'll be fun, but that'll be a while from now. As far as retextures go, you might see a mesh in the game, or uh, in other words, anything that is visible in the game an object like a rock or even a sword and think what if it were a different texture or a different color well we can do that today but there are two things you're going to need first you're going to need the BSA browser which allows you to browse through files that are used in Skyrim and in your data folder for Skyrim you will see things like meshes and textures today we're looking at textures but you'll also see, also see things for Dragonborn and Dawnguard those are just the DLCs so their own separate entities. But we're going to look in the textures one. So after you download BSA browser, and I'll leave a link for that in the description, if you don't understand how to install it, there are plenty of videos out there teaching you how to install it. I'm not um, going to cover that right now because that's not the topic that we're on. But after you open BSA browser and textures, search steel sword because that's what we are going to retexture. And I think I want to just apply a blue tint and add probably maybe a ice effect to it just for effect make kind of a colder look to it so after you open your basic browser I've said that a billion times I'm sorry uh, <laughs> you're gonna want steel sword DDS and steel sword uh, underscore in DDS now the underscore in DDS is the normal map and normal maps are what add depth if you open one up in GIMP or Photoshop you will realize that it's kind of purple slash pink um, but some areas are darker where the lines and edges are defined. And they're so detailed in Skyrim, you can just tell. And we'll get into how to make normal maps in GIMP later on. That's what I'm going to be using for these tutorials is GIMP. You can use Photoshop. You can look on up on tutorials for Photoshop. But I prefer GIMP. It's more simple. It works. So that's what we're going to be using. And speaking of GIMP, you are going to need the DDS plugin to edit these files. DDS is what Skyrim uses for textures. So if you want to edit these textures, you're going to have to have that. Alright, so now that we've covered that, and after you have installed both the BSA browser and GIMP, we'll get started. So extract steel sword in DDS and steel sword DDS. Steel sword DDS is actually what carries all of the color and all of that. And we'll get into highlights and glows on swords and things like that later on. But for now, as I said, we're starting simple. So click Extract and go to your folder of choice in your Data Skyrim folder. Make sure it's in Textures. It doesn't matter after that. You can name your files whatever you want. As long as it's in Data, Texture, it will work. So extract that there. And then we're going to open it up in GIMP. I already extracted it, so let's get started. So as you can see, because I have the .dds plugin installed for GIMP, um, which automatically opens these files, you can already see some previews. Here you have the map for the Steel Sword and Steel Sword In. So we're not going to edit Steel Sword In because all we're doing today is retexturing the blade, making it just a little colder. And maybe we'll make the hilt black. So drag in Steel Sword, the main texture file. And here's your texture map, your UV, I guess you could call it. What this is right here is the brown 
leather on the hilt that you can see in game and this is obviously the blade as you can tell this is the cross guard this is this seems to be the butt of the blade and other key features of the sword so make sure you have your two toolbox open for GIMP if you aren't used to GIMP don't worry it is pretty simple to use so you'll get used to it if you are using it instead of Photoshop which I highly advise if you're following these tutorials okay so now you're gonna need layers just in case we need to undo something or keep something off to the side a layer that we might need for this tutorial we might not since we're really just editing the main one filters not filters we're gonna need another dockable dialogue which is tool options actually we already have that down here that's good usually mine pops up without it it's pretty annoying um, so the first thing we're gonna do is take this free select tool we're gonna work on the blade first so zoom in on your image and start going just around the blade alright so here is our selected blade what we're gonna do now is apply a tint to it now there are two ways that you can do this I used to use the paintbrush lower the opacity and choose what color I wanted so in this case probably a whitish blue color kinda of light up the size and cover it now right here this is that's a little too much so lower the opacity some more and you get a lighter look to it which will look still realistic in game however a better way to do this because sometimes the opacity can still affect the certain dark natures of the blade the best thing to do in my opinion under certain circumstances stances, um, most circumstances <clears throat> is to go to colors and then you're going to go down to colorify once you're in colorify colorify it applies its own tint to what you've selected so get to your custom color find your color of choice um, and I'm gonna want something around here like so and now we have a kind of green blue look so it still looks like finished steel but it's blue and it's not as like otherwise like what I did before it kinda makes it look like you added a layer on it and it's really noticeable you don't really want that so here now we have a kind of more poison blade looking one because of the um, color that I chose so maybe we won't we won't do ice maybe we'll apply a poison effect or a stamina taking effect to it just to match the look of the blade make it a little more immersive for the game anyway now that we've done that let's retexture the hilt so go to your select tool and so you can deselect that and go around the leather of your hilt So here's what I was talking about with the opacity paintbrush choice uh, method is if you want to go a little darker than that it starts to actually um, deepen the opacity and so it just turns to a black solid. So if you want something darker that's why colorify is a bit better. So let's go a darker color not completely black and it's still noticeable but it seems we went a little too dark at the same time the normal map that I mentioned the more purple image is going to bring out the depth of say the crease here in the leather or the the lacing on the hilt so let's make that a little less intense though just to make sure we're not going too crazy on the color now we've got a darker gray select it all control shift E and you're going to want to export it to 
data. And then you'll go back to, into textures and the same place. So I'm exporting it to tutorial vids where I have everything and dropping it there. Replace it. It will generate its own mitmaps. What mitmaps are is they lower the, the resolution per one. So once you get to mitmap map eight, it's really small. What this does is in game, if you've got, if you've chosen to do low, um, low textures instead of high quality quality te textures in your uh, in your options it'll show lower textures so it'll still look all right still like the image but it won't look its best because you haven't chosen ultra or a little lower than that i don't usually go all the way or or my computer can be slow at times so export that you can close out gimp now now we're concerned with creation kit. What you're gonna want to do now is open your creation kit file, the file that you want to edit, the mod you want to edit. For me, of course, tutorial vids. Um, and we're going to go into miscellaneous. All the way down in miscellaneous, you find texture set. This is where you can find textures that are input in the game instead of ones that are handled in the BSA that we just looked into. So right click new, go ahead and type in your texture ID of, to uh, of choice. I'm going to name mine tutorial vids poison blade. Okay, and the defuse is the main texture that we just edited. Textures, we're going to find tutorial vids, click that one. Oh, and make sure you have the the extension of DDS. If you don't, that can be bad. But it seems we already did. It's just not showing the preview. Select that one. As you can see, it shows up in game, and then you're going to want the same normal map. As you can see, you get a preview of it here, a more close-up look. See where it shines in certain parts and where it doesn't. It really brings out the depth, and I can't wait to show you how that all works. Click OK. And now you have a texture in your game in your uh, creation kit mod. Save it. Now we're going to go find first person steel sword. Okay. Now what we're doing is clicking edit, changing the ID so it will duplicate it instead of us duplicating it and then editing that and then trying to say, oh, don't create a new form. That's too much of a hassle. Just do a new ID. First person tutorial vids or tutorial poison blade is what I'd prefer. And then click edit on the model down here. We are not going to change the model because we want the steel sword. And so go down to first person steel sword. That is the main sword. SCB stands for scabbard and then there are edge bloods. Edge bloods are not visible, but they're on the model. But when you hit someone in game, they become visible because parts of them are then covered in blood. It's pretty interesting how that works. So double click first person steel, search in your new texture set that you just made. Sometimes it will come uh, come up with certain warnings. Should be fine. As you can see, the hilt changed to black, but we can't really see the blade yet. But it will work, I promise you. If that worked, then the blade should work as well. Scabbard is just cover covering it up. Click OK. OK, and you're going to want to create new form. Now that we have that, search the actual steel sword. There we go. So find steel sword. Double click it. We're going to do the same thing, just edit the texture, maybe add an enchantment to it because that's what we want. ID is going to be tutorial vid poison blade blade because I'm not quite sure if tutorial vid poison blade was the ID that we used for the texture set itself. Then for the name we're going to use poison blade, simple enough. 
and then go down to enchanting and find the enchantment you want. So what we want is to damage the stamina. We're going to go with an easy two. Now the enchantment right here, as opposed to the enchanting, this it talks about how much uh, soul energy, I guess, is in it. What's the proper term? I feel like a noob right now. How much the charge is, I believe, charge. Anyway, usually it's pretty high. We'll just keep it at a 2,000. You can compare it to other blades. See what you prefer on that. We're going to up the value because this is not just your ordinary steel sword. This is a poison blade, am I right? So first person to model object is going to be the first person poison blade that we just made so that it can look like you are holding the poison, poison blade when you're walking around. If you're in first person mode or in third person mode, if you're carrying it on your back, uh, or not on your back, on your side, or you're holding it in your hand, then you will see poison blade. If you don't have it on the proper texture group set that you just made, it will just look like a steel sword. And it'll only look like a poison blade when it's not on you. That is, if you have edited this as well. We're going to do the same thing here. That way it looks like a poison blade when we don't have it on us and it's just simply on a shelf or on the floor or on someone else. So what you're going to want to do is, of course, find the texture set that you made. Tutorial of its poison blade for me. That's done. What's done is done. Now what you're going to see is the texture that you just created. Go over here to keywords and you can add something like web type poison special or something like that if you need a keyword for something else to help to reference it. But in my case, I'm just adding a sword of the game. Don't really care. Um, vendor item weapon means that you can sell it to a vendor who buys and sells swords. Wet material steel means it's a steel weapon. Ours, I'll just say it's a steel sword just modified. Um, weapon type sword duh because it's a sword all of these sounds are already done the ID that we edited was steel sword go ahead and create a new form otherwise everything will be messed up in the game you don't want that save because you never know when the creation kit is going to crash add some new edits if you want but I'm done here as for as far as the poison blade goes you can place it somewhere Add it to some lists that uh, tell vendors they can sell it, or I'm just going to put it in my inventory using the console just to show you what it looks like in game. So let's go. Boom. As you can see, the tint has been applied to our poison blade, and it looks kind of like um, that kind of old bronze look. Also, what, what happened here, that odd transition there I actually edited part of the blade that is connected to the cross guard so if you don't want to tint the cross guard with that go ahead and leave that out deselect that in GIMP so you don't tint it so that the cross guard looks like a bit more like a good transition that kinda looks bad right there I would have to fix that if I want to keep going with this blade but I say it looks pretty nice Hilt looks pretty good. As you can see, it is not all the way black. It's a darker brown. Really like that. Kind of a dark brown, dark gray kind of thing. You can see the stitching. It's pretty clear. And it looks all natural like a real blade in Skyrim. I hope I helped you out today. Hope you learned something. Be back for another tutorial. We're going to start getting into how to create your own custom sword so that you can add your own sword to your game 